This video will be an overview of the Silent Night SK5808 addressable file and control panel. In the first part of this video, I will be going over the panel itself, and in the second part of the video, I will be explaining how this panel is normally used and if it's a good first file and panel. So first of all, the outer enclosure is around 16 inches wide, 26 inches tall, and 4 inches deep. Um, this is about the same size as the uh, SKE450 that I just did a video on the other day. Um, they have about the same can, but they have different knockouts and different mounting holes inside. So on the front door, you actually see that the main feature is the keypad, which is actually accessible even when the door is closed, which is a really cool feature about this panel. So you can program it and do everything without even opening the panel. Um, so there's also a password and something called a firefighter's key um, so that they can quickly access um, these buttons right here, and you can also use a password to access them too. And below that, all we have is the sticker that has the model number and everything. This is a sticker I put on there. didn't come like that. And the other features on the outside of the panel are the two hinges, and they're just screws. So let's go ahead and open up the panel. And to open the panel, all we need is a standard silent night key. And there's a lock right on the uh, right side of it. So the first thing you see once we open it up is there's one main circuit board inside. But before we go over that, um, there's a sticker right here on the door. It kind of just shows the basic wiring and some basic specifications of the board. And this is the main board itself. Everything's integrated into one board, so it has a power supply built into the CPU and all that stuff. Um, it was actually held to the can um, by two spot welded rails, and then the uh, CPU is screwed into that. So it's actually pretty securely mounted, um, and there's a lot of space for batteries and relays and all that sort of stuff below it. So they probably could have made this panel a lot smaller, but it is nice so there's room to add modules and stuff. And before we take a closer look at the actual board itself, um, on the can there are lots of mounting holes, some keyholes at the top, um, and then there's lots of half inch, three quarter, and a couple one inch knockouts all the way around it. So now let's take a closer look at the board. Now here's the actual CPU board itself. As you can see the main feature is the actual built-in um, LCD enunciator. I mean it just has some basic uh, function buttons, it has programming and a menu system built in. It also has this key lock which I actually don't have the key for that. That just basically enables um, some basic programming settings like drill and walk test I think. But it mainly just enables these three buttons so the firefighters can't operate the panel without knowing the password. Now some other main things on this board are these terminals which are for the SLC. There's phone lines for the built-in dialer. And here are all your power outputs and NACs. There's your battery terminals. This is kind of the power supply area. Um, there's your main AC input. And there's the programming port right there. So now let's take a closer look at some of the screw terminals. So starting at the upper left hand corner of the board you'll see six screw terminals. Um, these are for SLC functions. So the first two are your actual SLC in. Second two are the SLC out. And the third set is SLC programming. Um, you only need the SLC in if you're doing class A, where it's basically a big loop, and since this is addressable, if you're doing class B, you don't need a resistor. So normally you're just going to be using the SLC out terminals, these two, to hook up all your initiating devices. And the last set of terminals is the SLC programming terminals, which is actually for programming the address of some devices. I will talk more about that later. Now if we go over a bit, so now here are all the screw terminals for the built-in dialer. This actually has two phone lines. I have never hooked them up or messed with it, so I'm not exactly sure what each one does, but those are for the built-in dialer. Right here are the majority of the terminals. Starting from the top, we have a dedicated trouble relay, which will activate if there's a trouble in the system. And below that, we have two programmable relays, which can basically be programmed to whatever you want in the settings. Now below that, we have our four NAC circuits. And these circuits can also be programmed as many other things, so they're basically more than just NACs. They're just general purpose output circuits. Now going down a little bit, we have the SBUS terminals, which there is a A, B, plus and minus. And the plus and minus are also your general purpose 24 volt power. Um, and then the A and B are to communicate with an enunciator, such as the 5860 enunciator, which is fairly commonly used on these panels. And that basically just emulates the uh, front panel. Now the last set of terminals on this side are the battery terminals. Um, the cool thing about this panel is you don't need a battery harness. You can just use any two wires with spade terminals on the other end. Um, so you just stick your positive and negative from your batteries right in here. Um, this is a 24 volt panel so you'll need two 7 amp hour batteries. I believe you can also get bigger batteries but I think the minimum is 7 amp hours per battery. Alright so let's go over the last couple of things on the board. And starting at the top here this is the serial programming port for programming the panel. This is a non-proprietary panel, so you can download the software for free. 
I will link the data sheet on Soundlight's website in the description, and that includes all the software you would need and all the manuals and everything. And the last set of terminals on the panel are the power terminals. These are labeled B, Earth, and W. The B is for your hot or black wire. The Earth is obviously for your green wire and the W is for your neutral or white wire. And one interesting thing about this panel is these resistors get very hot when it's running, but it is normal for the, all these components right here to get relatively warm. All right, so that was a basic overview of the panel itself. Um, now I'm gonna go over if you should buy this panel, if it's collector friendly, and kind of how it works. So this is an adjustable fire alarm panel. So it has one SLC circuit that goes around the entire building and connects devices such as smoke detectors, and pull stations. Um, this has normal NAC circuits, so you can connect any horn strobe to this panel. It has lots of built-in sync for system sensor and devices like that. And I believe you can actually put up to 159 devices on the SLC. Um, normally these panels can actually do SD devices or SK devices, but this is actually a panel from 2005, so it's one of the earlier ones, and this can only do the SD devices such as the SD505 APS smoke detector. Um, here are two SD500 AIM modules. This one, interestingly enough, is only Class B, so you have to have a resistor for it. And this one's Class A. And I also will be making a video on these devices themselves. Now on most Silent Night 5808s, you can actually use SK devices also, but you can't mix them. But with this one, for some reason, it can only work with SD and it's not the firmware because I don't have a newer firmware version for this. So I'm kind of stuck using these devices. Now one interesting thing about these devices is I will be making a video on the smoke detector soon, but... And you will notice there's no dip switches or anything to set the address on these detectors. And that's what the SSC programming terminals do. So you basically wire up the base to those terminals, you connect your smoke detector, and in the programming menu you can actually set the address of the device. Now other devices such as pull stations and modules actually just have standard dip switches to set the address. Now you may be wondering if you should actually buy one of these panels. Well, they're addressable panels, so I don't recommend them as a very first panel. But if you already have a couple fire alarm panels and you're looking to get an addressable, they are pretty good. Um, if you're looking for the type of panel that makes like the lights blink really fast on the devices, this is not the panel for you because I believe the lights blink once every 30 or 60 seconds on each device. So yeah, they blink pretty slow. Um, other than that, it's a pretty good panel. Um, the power supply is a little weird. I'm having some problems with it. I'm not sure if that's just because this one's pretty old or if it's a problem with them, but it does get pretty warm and sometimes it doesn't turn on right away. So I will be making a programming tutorial for this panel pretty soon and a wiring tutorial. So if you want to see those, um, they will be on my channel pretty soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.